very happy to be joined by the dudes from Capybara Games, Nathan Vella and Chris Piotrowski. Wonderful. Did I get it right? That was really good. Nailed yeah. it. Yeah. Nailed it. The hardest awesome. part of this job is seeing people's names on Twitter for like four years and then fucking up their surnames. Realizing right. you never right. actually yeah. said it to yourself in your head. Never. No. Like, Nathan Vela. Yeah. Vila. So Nathan, apart from being everyone's favorite Canadian uh, video game award show host, uh, you yeah, also what? are a frequent visitor to our, our what's going on Mary? Can I have this? You want this? What? For me? Yes. Can I have both of them? All right, okay. Double, double mic, double mic. I'm going to double down. Uh, apart from that, you also create video games and come on our show like every other week to talk about them. Yeah, the last time I saw you, you were handing me a beer after oh, the IGF true. Awards. I about it that. was the best beer that I've ever had. So thanks, thanks, man. No beers today. Yeah, we're. They make me feel extra bad for not having a beer for you today. You should have had beers for us, actually. Sorry. That's okay. Uh, you're here to show off below, which is uh, playable on the show floor. First yeah. time it's been playable. First time ever. Yeah. We announced it on stage at the Microsoft E3 press conference uh, last year and then kind of went dark while yes. we were making it. Um, and now PAX East is the perfect place for us to kind of open it up and awesome. let everyone play it. And actually, we realized that we showed Super Time Force for the very first time at PAX East. Now we're showing Below for the very first time at PAX East. So basically, Next we're just uh, we're just gonna keep making games just to reveal at PAX East. That's like we're gonna, we might, we might be a staple like the Behemoth booth, which yeah. has been there since the dawn of time. Forever. Uh, it's actually the PAX monolith. Exactly. So yeah, we're we're here to show we're here to show Below. Below is uh, Cappy's roguelike inspired adventure game. Uh, it's it's all about you as a tiny character in a rather large world. And Chris is going to dive right in and, and give her some give her some going. You can. You can start playing, man. You can start playing the video game now. Oh, am I playing now? You're playing can now. Can people see me playing? Uh, we're also going to take questions okay, from the audience. Okay, here we go. If you have any, uh, we'll do a little shout out. You raise your hand oh. and uh, one of our lovely... Is there audio? <gasps> it'll, be, it'll, be, it'll be getting audio. Can so, you guys hear Danny all right? Oh. I can scream if you want! Yes. Okay. Okay. Your voice will you last 12 minutes. You're saying I should turn on my microphone. <laughs> <laughs> this is how we roll, man. I love it. Hello. <clears throat> Hello. Below, go for it. There we go. There you go. <laughs> Sorry. So yeah, Below is, is our new game coming to Steam and Xbox One. Uh, we just announced the Steam part of that recently, yes, so we're very trailer. excited to get it to uh, our, our PC fans. Um, and, and Below is a game where you arrive in an island. Uh, we don't show you any text. We don't tell you why you're there. There's no real tutorials. We just let you go. Um, and the goal of the game is to explore. It's to survive. And through those two, you end up discovering why you're there, what the island is, why you're delving through the depths of the island, uh, and, and you get to do a heck of a lot of uh, really badass combat, um, and it's brutal. You're going to die a hell of a lot. It seems to be a theme in our games lately that you're going to die a lot, but uh, you're definitely going to die, you're, and then the next version of you comes, and it's sequential. You're not just respawning and restarting the game over and over yeah. again. You're actually another wanderer showing up at the island after the last one. Okay. Um, and the work that you do, the, the things that you achieve, the stuff that you find in one playthrough carries over to the next one. Cool. Uh, so, so if you pick up a, an item uh, and go a couple levels deeper and then die, Drop. that item is actually on your corpse. It's not going to just magically appear back where it was. So you actually have to like go through and find your corpses uh, and, and you know, through each life progress further through the depths. So this is kind of, I guess, maybe a spiritual successor to Sorcery. Obviously, Chris working on that, and Jim Guthrie doing the music and whatnot. And then the art style is kind of similar enough. Is this a very different gameplay experience to, to what Super Brothers or Sorcery was? Uh, yeah, definitely. Um, I mean, stylistically, I think it's uh, there's similarities. Um, uh, we were definitely focusing on a very specific kind of mood and a, a specific sort of pace. Uh, but then once you get into sort of the nitty gritty of the of the game, um, it's a completely different game. I mean, it's it's really very much about uh, you know learning how to uh, become good at the combat, learning how to understand like what's going on in the environment. Um, so in terms of like just pure, pure gameplay, uh, it has a much denser, uh, mm. richer sort of experience than, than sorcery, I guess, in the more traditional gaming sort of sense. And you guys set the move right from the start here. I got to play this on the show floor down at the Double Fine booth. And uh, it starts off with that l really long climb up the wall. And then, you know, you're, then you're descending here. And what struck me is the size of the character relative to the rest of the screen. I was trying to think of the last game that I played where there was such a discrepancy between you know, that you guys were using all of this space and being so small. What, what, how is that, 
what was sort of the inspiration for that aesthetic? What are you guys trying to make me feel like here? Because I feel kind of lonely. <laughs> uh, we're trying to make you feel like a completely fragile and insignificant human being. That's very sweet of you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and it's you're welcome. <laughs> for from the very beginning of the very first time that, that Chris even pitched us the concept at the mm -hmm. studio, the idea was to create this like sense of scale that you're small, you're weak, you're one mistake away from dying at basically every turn. Um, and in order to do that, we really wanted to play that up with uh, most of the dungeons in the game, which are entirely procedurally generated, mm. are single screens. So you have a very clear sense of scale. It's very clear that you're small and the world is much larger. But you also know where you can explore. Um, and because it's inspired by roguelikes, uh, there are certain things like the fact that it is procedurally generated and that death is permanent. Um, the way that uh, health works in the game is that you take damage, um, and even the smallest amount of damage will start you bleeding. Um, and if you don't deal with the fact that you're bleeding mm. like a normal human, you will eventually bleed to death. Um, so a little, little insignificant enemy not dealt with correctly can kill you if you don't know what you're doing. Um, and then you a guys large, like making hard games. We do. We, we, this game is meant to be challenging. And it's, we, love the, we love the audience of hard games when we love hard games ourselves. Whether it's Super Time Force or Below, both of those games are meant to be challenging games that, are going, that you learn through doing, you learn through playing, you learn through experiencing the world and then learning about it and coming back the next time and Oop. maybe dying on a spike trap. And did you just no, die? He did die. Oh, that's amazing. I sleep done. How many times have you done this demo? Uh, like a thousand times. <laughs> I played that one up for the crowd. Yeah, that was, well, he was, he was I, hamming big I time. saw it coming from 100 miles <laughs> away. But you, as but. you go through, you will learn, like, OK, these things are dangerous. And in a lot of cases, you're learning by poking around and yeah. just trying to like, search your way through it. And you know, maybe that's going to kill you. But the next time you come in, the next wanderer that arrives, they know better. How difficult is it to demo a game like this, where not only is it like the, the mood is so like, intimate, but then also the the lack of information that you're giving to the player. It's one of these games where you kind of just have to learn by feel almost. How difficult is it like having people playing on the show for right in that environment? We've been really, really oh stoked God. on the fact that people... You die again? This is great. Can we go for a record? That's, that's our game right there, <laughs> in a nutshell. Uh, even experienced players are going to get knocked on their butts. How many of you guys I'm have just been nervous. I'm nervous. I've never played it in front of a crowd. Hard games? You guys have playing, been playing hard Dark games? Dark Souls! Lately? Yeah. yeah. Uh, if you've got any questions, in fact, uh, put your hand up, and we'll get, yeah, do it over here. You got a mic over there? Yeah, okay, I got to focus. Let's get that dude a mic. Chris will die like five times before the mic gets you, don't worry about it. <laughs> no. He's focused now, look at him, That's, that is the, the eye of the tiger. So what is this thing? You gonna hit him? All right. Yeah, is there um, like a concept of bosses within this? Right. Like uh, Games like Rogue Legacy have bosses that are like preconceived. Um, will there be like some sort of randomness to the bosses if there are some? Uh, there's a there's a big component to the game that um, that we're not talking about just yet, but it does sort of encapsulate the boss sort of concept. Um, so kind of roundabout answer, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, with a question mark at yeah, the end and five then an question marks at the end. I just didn't know if you yeah if you were yeah, able to yeah. talk about it and like you know it reminds me of like Shadow of the Colossus and Dark Souls. So that'd be that's like a really the best cool thing to see. Thank you very much. <laughs> we're, we're we're friends now. <laughs> Awesome. Thanks very much. Great shirt as well. Uh, do you have any other questions over there? I can't see. Yeah, dude right there. Wearing the plaid. Why am I saying that? Everyone's wearing plaid. I'm wearing plaid. I'm I really plaid. enjoy the music a lot. Um, what kind of the inspiration for where that came from? Uh, well, the, <clears throat> Jim Guthrie is the guy making the music. Um, so we worked with him previously on Sword and Sorcery. And it was such a great experience that right after that project was done, we were just like, you know, we knew we, were want we wanted to make Below right after that project, and uh, we just basically wanted to work together again. Um, and so the tone. Uh oh, oh. I look at this one. You're gonna get killed again. <laughs> no, oh get my killed. god! Heal, heal, okay, heal, heal, I heal. Got, no, I got killed because. Sorry, of the I killed overlay. you. <laughs> that one was not my fault. There's you a little overlay on the picture. On picture. Uh, we, we basically uh, captured Jim and locked him in a room until yeah, he agreed yeah. to do Below with us. Uh, he's, for those of us who grew up in Ontario, Jim's actually kind of an indie rock legend. He's, mm. His music was, like, we were listening to it when we were in university together. And being able to work with someone who can do sorcery and then do the soundtrack for Indie Game and Movie and then do a soundtrack for other documentaries and then also, you know, 
have Chris sitting in his studio jamming on the game to make sure that the game has the right vibe and the right tone and that the music works well with what we're trying to do kind of with space and with even like making the player maybe feel a little more lonely in certain cases or making them feel like oh maybe there's a something bigger coming up but uh, just um, working with someone who can do that is that's close. That's he's, he's magic <laughs> were you his in then into like do, doing soundtracks for video game stuff because people, like a lot of people, including myself, would have assumed that's how he like that was what he was doing. I have no idea. Jim, Jim was like uh, uh, doing a whole bunch of amazing uh, indie rock, and then um, he met uh, Craig D. Adams from Super Brothers, um, and they started doing a couple little projects together. They did uh, like a video called Children of the Clone, which was um, Craig's animations to like Jim started playing around with the PlayStation Music Maker right. early on, and so he made all these like little fun uh, bleepy bloopy Jim sounds that. Did sounded, you do the like, soundtrack for Vib Ribbon? Is that what you're saying? Uh, <laughs> no, but it's you know it's got that kind of crazy weird Jim vibe through a PlayStation uh, music program, and then that was sort of one of the inspirations for. Uh, for the music style of, uh, of sorcery, it sort of was like building on this thing that was mm. Jim. That Jim was sort of doing in his basement on his own. Um, but it's, it's a big, a big part of all of our games, and, and this game especially is we were trying to make a game that's you know got all really you know deep gameplay, but we're mm. also trying to make it aesthetically focused. And the yeah. visuals and the audio are central to the experience. They're not just something that kind of there because you need to have some graphics. It's a lot of the gameplay in the game is built around the visual style and around Jim's music. And being able to like build a game around great art and around great sound makes it a lot easier for us to craft the exact type of experience that we yeah. want to craft and hopefully the exact experience that players will really want to dive into and poke around in and, and explore. So this is coming to Xbox One and PC. Uh, do you have any other idea of when when about to play it? We're going to get it in 2014. I, I hope so. I it's not, we're not too. It's not sure. an answer, Nathan. Yeah, that is I hope a, so too. Uh, we have we have learned uh, uh, not to go too far ahead of ourselves. You guys so take your time as well, right? We like, do. We we really believe that the best thing that developers can have is a chance to like spend time with their projects and. We, we kind of use the loaf of bread reference where it needs time to proof and then it needs time in the oven and it needs to be golden brown before we're going to take it out. Mm. And we, don't, we think the worst thing that we can do as a studio is hand unfinished work to people who are going to pay money for our stuff. Mm. We really want to, we want to be able to look people in the face and tell them that we think it's great and, and not be lying. We want to make sure that the stuff that we put out is what we want to put out. And sometimes that means that games take a little longer. And, Hopefully we can do our best to get this one uh, in, in people's hands as soon as possible. We're going to be, now that it's out there in the open, we've been super quiet about it. Now yeah. that it's out in the open, we're going to try to show as much as we can about the game and try to you know, get as many people seeing as much as we can soon. So stay tuned, folks. And when is Super Time Force out? Super Time Force is out very soon. Uh, end of May, early June is, is what we're looking at. It's, it's yeah. in testing and certification right now. Cool. So. We're soon. really excited. That's that's a it's the first time that we've really like been able to look, sit back, and say, "Holy crap! We just made a giant, crazy <laughs> platformer with time travel." Um, so yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be a heck of a year for us. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, uh, keeping busy. Yeah, every, everybody who's been following Super Time Force will get a chance to play it real soon on 360 and on Xbox One as well. Excellent. You're a good pitch man. I like it. I I, I know my I know my beats. Nice I know word. how to I know how to hit those marks. One last question: Are you uh, going to host the IGF Awards next year? <laughs> <laughs> I, are you stuck now? Are you, in, are you the new Andy Schatz? Or are you going to have to do it for I six years? I cannot pull off a pink shirt like Andy Schatz okay. can pull off a pink shirt. Um, I think no, you can. I, I have never tried, actually. Well, Alexander um, Bruce is here. Maybe he could do it. He rocks his pink shirt pretty uh, good. Alexander can do everything better than everyone, so that's not a fair comparison, I don't think. Nice um, I would love to do it again if they'll have me. I, it was a lot of fun handing mm. awards to my friends and people that I believed really deserved it, um, and also uh, sure. telling some jokes. and. Having some fun and drinking some beers. Yes, indeed. Same again next year. Nathan and Chris, thank you so much for coming on. Uh, round of applause, please, for Below. Yeah.